I'm going to go down to the calibration immediately below the identification under the compound section in my processing method. Now notice that it has already uh, taken all of my named peaks and put it in the name column. Immediately to the right of that, I have amount units and concentration units. Now, amount differs from concentration in the fact that the amount is what is read directly off of the calibration curve. So let's say that I have uh, nanograms per microliter for my amount as it's read off a uh, calibration curve. But then in addition to that, I have a series of dilution factors and mul multiplication factors that will eventually get me to grams per liter as a concentration. So that's the difference between the amount column and the concentration. The amount column is the specific amount that is read off of the standard curve or off of the calibration curve. The concentration is that amount with all of the dilution factors and multiplication factors taken into consideration to give me a final concentration. So just for the sake of argument here, I am going to put my amount unit as nanograms per mil. And I can do that to all of my different named peaks, or I could do it for the first named peak, then right mouse click and fill down so it fills down to all of the other um, named peaks as well. And then my concentration is going to be in grams per liter. And again, I'm going to do that for the first named peak, right mouse click and fill that down to add that to each one of my other named peaks in this calibration table. Now, as I move to the right with my uh, scroll bar, you'll notice that we've got some other columns that are available here. We've got response, the curve, weighting factors, if I'm going to do a manual factor, if I'm going to do any kind of uh, reference corrections, et cetera. And then we have a series of levels, level one, two, three, four, and five. This is by default. Open Lab CDS comes by default with it setting up five different levels of standards. Well, maybe I don't have five levels. As a matter of fact, I don't in this set of data. I only have three levels. Well, to change that, go to the general tab immediately to the right of the compound table tab. And the, this is currently set for an external standard calibration. And the number of levels is set to five. I'm going to set it to three instead of five. And then you have a couple of other options down below. You can either do the curve calculation based on the average of each one of your levels, or if you use the pull down menu there, you could do it from the individual calibration points. Now, what's the difference between those two? Well, in ChemStation, if you were to do a triplicate injection of a single level of standard, ChemStation will take that average of those three different injections. And it will then draw the linear regression, linear regression based on the average of those three injections. If you want the software to act exactly the way ChemStation did, then you would select to average per level each one of those three injections. You take the average of that, and that would be one single point in the linear regression. If, however, you would like to see a scatter plot of what each one of those individual injections looks like, and then draw the correlation coefficient line through the best correlation fit of that scatter plot of three separate injections, then you would select the second option from the individual calibration points themselves. And then your response factor can either be your response per amount or amount per response, depending upon your application and whatever, and whatever laboratory you're doing this in. So I am going to set mine as uh, three levels of injections, and I am going to do the individual calibration points. Even though I only have one single injection per level, I'm still going to make it from that single injection point. Now I'm going to go back to my compound table, and you should notice that your level four and five have disappeared as far as columns in this table. I now only have levels one, two, and three, because I only have three levels of standards. Okay, 
with this first lowest level standard highlighted on level number one, I am going to add numerical values to each one of these named peaks. So for level one, for the first peak, my concentration or my level, it's really my amount, not my concentration, my amount is going to be one. For the second peak, my level one amount is going to be two. For the third named peak, for my first level standard, my, my amount is going to be three. And finally, for the fourth one, my amount is going to be four. Now, what exactly are these? These are the amounts in nanograms per mil of what the concentration is of my level one standard. Next, for level two standard, my first named peak is going to have a level two concentration of 10. My level two standard is going to have an amount for the second peak of 20. The third peak of my level two amount is going to be 30. And the fourth peak of my level two standard, of my level two amount is going to be 40. And then finally, my level three, my first named peak is going to have a level three concentration of 100. My second named peak for my level three is going to have a, an amount of 200. My third named peak is going to have an amount of 300. And my fourth named peak, 400. Established the concentration levels of each one of my three different standards. Now, in addition to that, one of the items that we have is the curve mode that's currently set to linear. I can decide whether I want it linear, quadratic, exponential, logarithmic, log-log, average response factor. And finally, I can also decide whether or not I would like to, what I want to do with the origin. Do I want to include the origin, ignore the origin, force it, or connect it? So to ignore it means that it doesn't matter where that origin is going to go. It's not going to go. It's going to go based on the other three levels. To include it means that it's included as one of my points. So now instead of an N of three levels, I have an N of four levels because the origin would be included as one level. To force it means irrelevant of where the slope of that particular line goes. It's going to force it to go through the zero, zero point. And finally, the connect one means that if it's not going to be a linear regression, it's going to be a point-to-point -point connect. So I'm going to connect the origin to the first level, then connect the first level to the second level, et cetera. In this example, I am going to keep it as included. That's perfectly fine. Now, one last thing that we have to do in order to be able to use this calibration curve is that we now have to define in the sequence which one of these samples is actually standards instead of samples. So to do that, in the Windows section of the, uh, the black ribbon up above, select the injection list window, injection list. And that's going to open up immediately to the left of the chromatograms window. This is a list of all of the injections that were inside of this result set. So notice everything is currently set to a sample type of sample. These first three injections, however, are actually standards. So when I get to the sample type sample of the first injection, I click on that 
downward facing arrow. And I'm going to treat this now as a Cal standard instead of a sample. I'm going to do the same thing for the next two injections as well. The second injection is a Cal standard, and the third injection is a Cal standard as well. But notice that as I'm doing that, the level has been changed to one, but it actually does not reflect the accurate level of what each one of these uh, standards are, because the lowest level standard is level one. Then the next injection is a second level standard, so that's level two. I need to change that level one to a level two for the second injection. And I need to change for the third injection, instead of a level one, it is a level three injection. And then finally, in the run type column, if I click on the very first field, there's a pull down menu that's available. If I want to be sure that this set of data is only looking at this calibration standard and this calibration curve and not some historical curve that was already saved with this method previously. Then I need to select to clear all calibration. This is a very important point that many of my customers don't realize happens. When you create a calibration curve and we save this method with the set of results. Let's say I'd like to use this method again in another set of results down the road. I can save the method outside of this set of results and use it on another set of data. If I forget to clear all of the calibrations or clear it at a certain level, it already has in its buffer memory from the last time I've used the method, the concentrations of the standards as they were run with that previous set of results. That's going to remain in its memory. If I do not clear all those calibrations, then in addition to the three levels that I have already defined here, it's actually going to use a fourth level because it's going to use what is already in the method um, electronics that was used in the last set of data. So if you want to be crystal clear that that has been wiped out and that you were doing an N of three and not an N of four, you need to make sure that you clear all these calibration, clear all the calibration as you're running or reprocessing that set of data. So with all of those items done, I can now select to reprocess all in the upper ribbon and that will reprocess all of my data. And you should see that in the injection results table down below, I now have numerical values for my amount and my concentration. And if I go to other injections on the left-hand side, it also updates with those numerical calculations based on my calibration curves. Now, what if I would like to see what my calibration curve looks like? Well. Again, it's an available window in the upper right-hand corner of that uh, black workspace. I can select calibration curve, and that's going to show me my calibration curve of the named peak that I currently have highlighted. In my example, I'm looking at my very first named peak, which is entitled Rich 1. Now, if I go to Rich 3, it shows me my calibration curve of my RICH3 names compound. And as I go from one injection to another on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there is a yellow diamond that moves along that calibration curve. That yellow diamond corresponds to what the amount was calculated off of the calibration curve. The other blue diamonds are the calibration curve points and that yellow one is what the unknown sample is, where it falls on that calibration curve. Now, you'll also notice one other thing on the set of data on the left-hand side. Notice that all of the injections have check marks to the right of them, with the exception of the very last one. And I want to call your attention to that, because this is, again, another feature of the software. If I take my mouse and I hover over that uh, triangle with the exclamation point, it tells me that the response is above the maximum calibration range 
for this particular for a particular compound. So if I click on that injection and I look at my level my named compound four, let's say, notice that I don't see a blue diamond. Instead, I see a, a much larger yellow diamond. If I take my mouse and I blow up this calibration point, you'll notice that the calibration point is actually, the yellow diamond is actually before the blue diamond, at least on the fourth compound. Let's take a look at the third compound and then blow up that last calibration point. It's the third compound that's really more of a problem because as you blow up that calibration curve, you'll notice that the blue diamond, which indicates the very last or top integrated standard, comes before the yellow diamond, which is the concentration of this one named peak in the calibration curve. So what the software is doing is it's visually telling the chemist, you might need to take a look at this because the concentration of this named peak is higher than the highest concentration of your standard. And in many systems, in many industries, that is not allowed. It has to be your uh, unknown sample has to fall within the linear range of your calibrated standards. It cannot be outside of that. 